this is a conversation between John Glazer and Fritjof Bergman. And most importantly, this conversation is a way of issuing an invitation, an invitation to participate in something that we are now ready to do. New work has existed for a very long time, since the early 80s, but at this point we are trying to organize a seminar that will be a national and an international seminar, and this conversation is a way of inviting people into this seminar that will now be organized and centrally be organized in Detroit to bring people into uh, new work and especially to make people who don't quite understand it yet to help understand what new work is about. So for Jock, if you were going to start that seminar with a brief definition of what new work is, how would you launch it to those who have not heard about it before? Uh, there are many parts to new work, and I'm not going to try to now define all of them. But a very, one of the most important parts of new work is a new and very different way of dealing with and alleviating and reducing and maybe resolving the enormous issue of poverty. So we are talking about poverty. What does new work have to say about getting rid of poverty or diminishing poverty? And in essence, new work is an effort to do this quite differently from how we have done it in the past or from what one has attempted in the past. That is, new work tries to connect poor people, and we don't call them poor people, actually. The expression we use is oasis people versus desert people. Desert people are those people that other people call poor. They are very inventive, they are very imaginative. They, they always have to figure out where they're going to sleep next. How do we alleviate the situation of desert people? And the essence of what new work does is it connects desert people with technologies which make it possible for them to work their own way out of the situation in which they are. So it's not a way of connecting them with jobs, it's a way of connecting them with technologies that make it possible for them to rise out of the situation in which at the moment they're stuck. So let me ask this, um, new work as a, an approach to poverty, employing technology to create pathways out of the desert and toward the oasis, you know, as a concept that makes some sense. Um, using technology, we'll have to explore how that happens. But can you comment on the wider significance of new work um, beyond a eradication of poverty and perhaps its relevance to the individuals who find themselves, you know, working not among the uh, desert people, but certainly not living on the best parts of the oasis either? Well, new work offers something in essence similar to what we just said about desert people. That is, there are people who do well, who are even on the fast track, but who feel very close to burning out. And uh, we introduce people who do well, who, who are on some kind of fast track also, to technologies that make them, and these are key words for us, that make them more independent, we talk about technologies making people economically independent, which means making them independent from their dependence on jobs, from the dependence on income from jobs. The idea is to make it possible for people to make use of technologies which give them much greater self-reliance and much greater independence. And this starts from very simple technologies but goes all the way up to the technologies with which one can create one's own uh, car or one's own electric bicycle. So there's a connection there. I think that what's emerging is the idea that there are technologies that enable a change in the way people live their economic lives. And with regard to the very, very poor who live on a desert of, uh, in, a, 
in the economy. Technology is a way to er eradicate uh, that dire position and provide an upward ascent and a self-reliant life. And then so too for the non-poor, for the people who are working in the job system, the same approach, the same technology offers a similar path toward independence, toward an independence from jobs and a more self-reliance. So those two things are connected and the common ground is the organization and use of technology for economic independence. And maybe you could um, help us understand how New Work under sees technology employed in this way. How does that happen? What is the overall uh, picture of using technology to create pathways for economic independence? I don't think this can be done in a way that is better than with specific examples. I think an overview there doesn't help very much. What does help is we work with specific examples and one that always comes up very early is what can we do about electricity? In Detroit, people that we call desert people die from heat in the winter and so how to assist people with technologies that make them, uh, that, that assist them in generating their own electricity is kind of the first example of what we do. Uh, and that, of course, as we have been saying now, applies also to people who are doing well. That is, many of them also want to get off the grid. And in the same way, of course, the desert people, it's not just getting off the grid, it's having electricity. So here yeah, I'll mention a few things as examples of what new work offers for people. One, that is very new and very uh, 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 amazing is that now people are working on solar panels that will cover roads so that not just rooftops but roads uh, can become uh, solar generating devices and of course roads are enormous in their size and if that particular approach were to succeed we would move from a situation of having to sort of be careful of electricity to a situation where we have, would have an abundance of electricity. And that idea of an abundance of electricity is very central to new work. That is, we believe that there are almost indefinitely many different ways in which electricity can be generated. And one that we sometimes show in a picture is simply a wooden beam and that wooden beam has propellers attached to it and one can throw it into any kind of river or any kind of moving water. And so with a, a, a wooden beam that has propellers built into it, one can generate electricity. But one can generate electricity in many different ways. And I want to emphasize, yes, there are solar ways of generating electricity, but there's also a way of that people call geothermal way of generating electricity where one basically simply pumps air down into the earth where in the winter it is warmed up and in the summer it is cooled and brings them up. The main point at the moment is that new work thinks of many possible ways of generating electricity, solar being the most popular one and maybe in some ways the best one, but there are many other ways of generating electricity for people. So I think that people will readily understand how, if people were able in a decentralized way to generate their own electricity, that would, one, eliminate the cost of paying utility bills and therefore add toward an economic um, independence, but it would also make that electricity available to power <coughs> other <clears throat> technology that runs on electricity and presumably this other technology that would run on electricity also makes contributions to an independent life. So even though it's difficult to give an overview of how technology can be employed to lead to economic independence, people will readily understood how in the world of 
generating electricity, uh, big steps toward empowering independence takes place. And using the electricity generated decentrally and essentially for free will enable people to run other technologies that require that electricity and that other, those other technologies also are examples to contribute to an economically independent life. But that is exactly right. The, the uses to which electricity can be put are almost indefinite and one could say infinite. So, yes. But uh, I want to move on to a second example. Uh, many people in, um, need to improve their housing in all kinds of different ways and sometimes it's a matter of making it more resistant to cold and to heat, and but also for some people it is very much a matter of not having housing that is at all adequate, but starting more or less from scratch with making themselves their own housing. And so a new work takes the approach that there are six or seven or maybe ten different ways in which people are dependent, or in which people require you know, need, they need money in order to survive, in order to live. One of them is electricity, another one of them is housing. Now, when it comes to housing, we again have a number of different uh, technologies that make it possible for people to, to a considerable and surprising extent, to build their own housing. One that it is, has been especially successful, we sometimes call the uh, Lego way of building. And again, these are things where we have pictures that we can show to people. That is, uh, we have done this even in Ann Arbor in a number of places. One can make blocks out of basically wooden panels and build out of these blocks in a Lego-like fashion just by sticking them together, by making them sort of attached to each other, uh, one can build the walls of houses, but of course what is needed is much more than just the walls of houses. And we have introduced or make it possible for people to get acquainted with technologies that also create furniture, that also create uh, electrical equipment that also create kitchen equipment so that people to a large extent can make their own the equipment they need in their housing. So the specific, the specific examples help people understand what kinds of technologies are relevant to new work and help people envision how using these technologies can lead toward more independence. Uh, especially economically. One of the things that you had said really helps with that general overview. One of the things that you had said was that essentially it is the need for money, for cash, that is the uh, uh, mechanism of the dependency that people have on the economy and on jobs. Obviously the need for money and for cash is you know, the sheer definition of what it is to be poor and the examples that you're giving are examples of how technologies can either eliminate costs as in generating your own activity or electricity or it could greatly reduce uh, costs that you have to spend money on by building for yourself those things that you otherwise would have to buy. So one of the main things that on a general overview is that one of the things that New Work envisions is the employment of technology to reduce or eliminate the dollars needed to, to live. And that's the definition of self-sufficiency. And so it raises questions in people's minds, which we should turn to later, um, and, which is where does the dollars come from in order to install the solar, in order to buy or acquire the materials that are needed for uh, the new methods of improving or building housing. And that's a question to which we'll have to return. But before we get to that point, the general idea of lowering the cost or lowering the need for cash and money in order to provide what's needed for a modern life might be one of those general principles uh, that help uh, 
help with an understanding of new work as an alternative to this job system where people trade their labor and their time for the cash that they need to live. Is that an accurate way of putting parts of what we're getting at here? Yes, John, exactly. Uh, maybe we need to clarify this. I simply meant that by only uh, inducing a number of generalities, one it doesn't really help people understand what's at stake. I think at some point, one has to get concrete and specific and give examples. We've now given two, we can go on to give three, four, five, six, ten examples. And they will help to clarify what are we doing and why do we think this is a possible way. So there is no inconsistency. That is, we do use specific examples, but of course, as you point out, out of these specific examples rises the general picture. Well, the specific examples are also themselves fundamentals. Electricity for power, building for, for housing. Uh, can you go on and speak about some of the other essentials, like the technology-related... Yeah, well, let me... Exactly. Uh, a third one has to do with, fo with food. And um, we started originally uh, vertical gardens in Detroit a very long time ago, but in the meantime... This has become uh, global. I mean, there are urban gardens in almost every country. And of course, th there the connection is most immediate. That is, one can grow one's own food and it thereby reduce the amount of money that one has to spend because one no longer buys the vegetables, the vegetables one grows oneself. And this is not a future fantasy. This is not pie in the sky. On the contrary, that already exists. And again, new work adds to this. Let me mention a couple of things. One of the things that new work has identified itself with are the so-called vertical gardens. And those are containers, and in those containers one puts the best possible compost one can create, and with the best possible compost in containers one puts plants into those containers and has amazingly large yields on very, very small amounts of land. In fact, really no land. Even in parking lots one can put up containers and in parking lots create vegetables or food. Another way of showing how new work goes beyond what other people do is our engagement with algae. Algae at this point are sometimes made analogous to oil. One can, almost anything that can be made out of oil can also be made out of algae. And so, uh, again, one can grow algae in small ponds or larger ponds and thereby produce a raw material that gives rise to a very large number of possible uses, namely similar to the uses of, of oil. So there is food as the next one. Uh, there are other things like, for example, uh, we make very much of the fact that computers have in them an enormous number of things that one can do oneself. Uh, recipes, prescriptions, uh, unfortunately lots of people do not know uh, uh, now all of those things that actually are in the computers that they own. I mentioned at the very beginning that really this is now the beginning of a seminar that we, we hope will meet in two weeks and that will be an international seminar and we will use Skype, which is what we are, you and I are using right now in order to introduce people to this seminar and to teach it possibly in quite a number of countries, but maybe starting in Detroit, but going beyond that. And again, uh, this is now different from what we have so far discussed, but the technology is, of course, the technology of computers, and computers can be used to reduce the amount of money that one has to spend by looking into computers for the things that, what one, that computers teach one to do oneself. And they are almost indefinite, from making sandals to making kimonos 
to making furniture, to making on and on and on. All of that can be found in computers, and that is part of what we would teach, using computers to reduce the dependency on money. So this might be a good point to move into another of the elements of new work. So, so far we've kind of identified that um, a basic idea is the use of technology to create economic independence, to end the dependence on the need for cash to buy those things that are needed for a good and modern life. And so we've got this image now of, of people using technologies to make for themselves, to do for themselves, those things that they would buy otherwise. But the image isn't really, is it, an individual um, creating for himself all of the things that he or she needs for their life. I mean, the image of new work isn't every individual um, moving off and owning personal technology that enables them to make for themselves what they need. Um, the image that you want people to see is not that of, of an individual organized around this technology, but larger, a community organized around this Absolutely. technology. Absolutely. So perhaps the, the productive side of things here, when you say, you know, people can use computers to learn how to do more things independently, that algae is a, growing algae is a, something that can create raw materials that can create a lot of products, electricity in abundance, you know, food grown, grown locally, housing solutions being able to be done. What is organized around that is a community sense of production. Perhaps you could fill in that aspect of new work on top of the notion of technology to increase independence? That's a wonderful question to pose right now because the intention of the particular conversation we are having is to introduce people to the idea that there can be and there needs to be and there will be a community training that it will enable people to move from the situation in which they are now to the kind of situation that new work hopes for and that it envisions. That is, the absolute central key to what we are talking about is training, training, and new work is in the position but is also able to provide this training. And so we will, in and to some extent we of course already have, but we will make much more of the possibility of connecting people with possible Skype talks like the one we are having right now, connecting that with social groups, with all kinds of different things, including, of course, maker spaces and including even churches. All of that is already in the process of happening. But training is... Uh, has become absolutely clear, and maybe that is something that should be identified with new work. And community training can that teach mothers how to, do, to deal in more interesting ways with very small children, even two or three or four months old, but of course up to changing almost everything about the current system of education and turning schools much more into um, endeavors in which people learn how to become economically independent than what schools do so far. So yes, training will be essential to make this possible. So that's, that's important. I mean, there, uh, people would easily understand that a, a transition to a new way of organizing things, a transition to a, an employment, greater employment of technology to for purposes it hasn't necessarily been used to so far. All of that requires training. All of that requires, you know, uh, learning how to, uh, to use these technologies to create that independence. And training is, of course, you know, going to be completely essential uh, to such a transition. I think that's easily grasped. What, what I think people would like to understand is training not to, toward what, but sort of under what kind of framework or organization. So we've got the idea that individuals alone don't uh, create uh, economic independence individually and, and in isolation from each other, that instead the productive processes that 
new technology makes possible happen at a community level and that connecting people is a very important part of what new work does, what new work training does, connecting people to get them organized in order to carry out these initiatives. Maybe, um, I, I guess what I'm asking is, can you comment about the concept of community production and what are the essential elements that a community production uh, entails? Because that is the, the overview, the frame of um, using technology in a community setting, with connecting people to each other in order to together create the economic independence that technology has to offer us. Right. Um, the concept of community production, which is central to new work, uh, is connected with something that we um, call, among other things, miniaturization. That is one of the great advances, one of the real amazing moves forward in technology is that technologies are not necessarily becoming larger and ever more centralized and ever more colossal and ever more expensive. But to some extent the opposite is happening, that it's becoming ever more possible to produce things that are smaller and still smaller. And of course the most immediately graspable example of that are iPhones, but also computers have become smaller and all kinds of technologies have become smaller. And that is connected to the idea of community production. All of the things that we have so far mentioned, including generating electricity, the point is that community production of electricity is possible. Um, many examples of small engines, small devices, uh, sometimes biological devices, sometimes small solar devices that make it possible for people in small ways and in ways that in fact become ever still smaller to uh, create on a community level electricity and build houses, build houses possibly in clusters, grow food including algae possibly in, uh, in, in groups but move beyond that. Uh, let me mention some further examples. Of course, it's possible to make clothes uh, using uh, modern technology. It's also possible to make furniture using modern technology. It's possible to uh, use uh, the kinds of technologies that now are available to also produce everything that is required for education and for child training, for child care, all of these are things. Child care, actually, as long as it is done on an individual basis, is an ex extremely, it's full of hassles and difficult, difficult, difficult to arrange to have somebody there when you need somebody there. So the community way of organizing childcare, the community way of organizing education are all parts of new work. And um, that, I think, is, is essential for people to understand what this is all about. Right now, <clears throat> in the <clears throat> job system for everybody solving their problems uh, of economic livelihood and sustainability as an individual or maybe as a family, um, but it, it's all kind of isolated from each other and in competition with each other for the scarce resources of employment and what that means in terms of um, uh, out of poverty or, and, and into, into jobs. So a organization of a community is the um, uh, impetus of new work to create a transition to something different. And so individuals right now often are not connected to communities. They often feel isolated and apart from them. Um, new work is able to bring those connections about. Um, so can you speak a little bit about the way in which community is created, nurtured, fostered, and developed through the new work training and the new work approach to economic life? Yes, of course. Maybe I should mention a few more things. That is, yeah. the medical expenses are part of what ties people to uh, the, the inadequate jobs they have. 
in the same way insurance is something that is extremely difficult for people to have. So again, here are two more examples of the kinds of things that can be organized on a community level. And the community way of organizing things that have to do with health, that have to do with education, that have to do with insurance, all three of these things make it much more possible to be economically independent, which is the key phrase to which we keep returning. Now, your question was, how can this be done? And actually, the answer to that is relatively simple. That is, in Detroit, some of that is already happening, but it is also happening in any number of other places, including in Africa and including in Germany and including in Mid-Eastern countries, in all the countries in which we work, in very much including India. Uh, the effort is uh, in actually very straightforward to introduce... Uh, uh, and make known and publicize and invite people to come together. Uh, but what we, the two of us, are doing right now is very important to your question. That is, it used to be the case that if you wanted to train and educate people, they had to come together, there had to be a room, and maybe there had to be lighting, and maybe there had to be heating, and God knows what to make training possible. All of that there, you know, this is part of why new work says technology is an enormous part of the answer. We can now use technology so that people can learn and train and be trained uh, without any of that, actually just using um, the kind of Skype that we are using right now. So Skype, uh, of course, uh, any number of other similar ways of using computers. But Skype is a way of using uh, computers to train people. And that is part of what New Work intends to do and is doing already. Well, it's, it's certainly familiar to everybody how uh, computers and the Internet create communities and organize people, connect them to each other, and, and ha enable them to share resources and learn. So that, too, is a, a very familiar connection that can be made between new work and, and this notion of uh, community production. Uh, is there anything else about community production that um, is, uh, uh, is essential for understanding or fleshing out the richness of the new work approach? Yes, I think so. In fact, uh, there's a great deal more, but let me repeat, I mean, we cannot discuss, we cannot cover everything mm -hmm. in this conversation, but I'll make an effort to give at least some impression of what makes it richer, as you say. I mean, strictly speaking, community production involves small devices that, in a community way, produce the kind of things we have just now talked about, including furniture and including clothing and including housing and so forth. But we have moved beyond that in a very significant way. That is... Uh, we developed a new way of manufacturing, and a new way, the new way of manufacturing has really given a great deal more power to the idea of new work than it had before. Our prime example, the example of, that we are most happy with, is the example of the electric motorcycle that we put together in Austria. And that is not just an electric motorcycle, but the whole point of it is that it can be manufactured with very few people in very small shops. That is, small room manufacturing is very much a part of new work. Small room manufacturing, where one can manufacture in small rooms with relatively inexpensive machines and relatively simple machines, um, almost even the most advanced kinds of products, including electric uh, mobility devices. So uh, that functions and is developed in a, a larger fashion than we have so far mentioned. That is, the idea really is that it has now become possible. And that is an achievement that new work can claim some claim for, that is, the possibility of small room manufacturing 
We have developed, we have proved that it is possible. Small room manufacturing means that in almost any space, that on its individual farm or in any village, in a village one can now manufacture, uh, in, in an individual house uh, somewhere in a rural area can manufacture. So manufacturing is no longer, as in the past, tied to cities. Yeah, this opens up a another dimension that I think will help people understand the um, transition that new work calls upon. So far, we talked about lowering the cost of, of being alive and having a, a rich life without necessarily using money. And the idea for that was uh, technology enabled people to produce things for themselves and give themselves an independence. And then we noted that that's not each individual by themselves, but it's communities as well. Uh, communities that are the ones that carry out and organize and produce these things. And now with the introduction of, again, the use of modern technology to create new manufacturing models, small, um, no, not capital intensive, and very, you know, um, uh, uh, almost craftsman's like craftsman like uh, community manufacturing. Now we've got the idea that communities can create products for markets. That communities can can build things not just for themselves to help lower the cost of life, but organize themselves into small manufacturing uh, enterprises that create things that that others throughout the world uh, may uh, want and desire or at least in, in the markets surrounding the community. And so now we got this idea that um, small manufacturing enterprises can be established uh, in a community where goods are made not just for the members of that community, but also as an enterprise that that community can participate in and um, uh, create economic independence in that manner as well. So can you talk about the enterprise aspect of new work, the, the, how communities um, face outward as well as inward in their productive activities? Yes, actually, I would want to emphasize that that is a crucial and central and very important part of new work. Uh, it can't really be understood unless one introduces also the idea of franchise systems. And we have worked with franchise systems at this point for quite a number of years. And simply enough, the central idea is that yes, it is possible to manufacture, uh, and we have pictures of that, and these pictures can be shown, very cool looking electric motorcycles, and of course, tricycles and any number of other electric mobility devices. Now, the idea is that one can set up a small room manufacturing uh, establishment in one place, but one can, so to say, based on that first example, create similar small room manufacturing organizations in many different places. And these can be connected to each other, and not just connected to each other, but they can strengthen each other, they can support each other, they can do what franchise systems are made to do. And that is exactly what New Work is at the moment engaged in, that is we are, we have um, created a prototype of electric uh, tricycles and bicycles, but we are at this point working in India and in Africa and in Russia and in other places on the idea of establishing similar organizations, but connecting them with each other and making the whole thing a franchise system, which will make it more efficient and cheaper and stronger because they will strengthen and support each other. So uh, these are the kind of new work enterprises that we are working on developing. So in addition to community production, there will be these new work enterprises that will be organized into franchise systems and that will produce and manufacture the more ambitious and the more advanced products. So they, that's pretty good. So the images now is that a community gets together not just to um, produce things for itself and, and, and for its members such that they can be more independent and uh, have many more options, choices for things to do and things to make, but also to find um, 
you know, uh, small manufacturing operations that a, a community right sized for the community, but connected with other small manufacturing operations, almost in a spoke and hub kind of framework where there's centralized services and help. One community um, manufacturing operation might be able to uh, have expertise in one particular area and they become the, the knowledge source to transfer that knowledge to other um, uh, others in the system. But a franchise system conjures in mind shared activities, best practices, um, uh, replica to being able to replicate what you're doing and serve local markets in that way and be united in a way that's mutually supportive and shares the knowledge and the technology for how to produce, sell, and distribute these things. And so now an enterprise is a part of a new work community. And that enterprise, can you distinguish that from traditional enterprises? What makes that different and, and new work? as opposed to just one more business in the world scene? It is almost totally different from uh, traditional enterprises because traditional enterprises, as we, of course, know, uh, are uh, organized around the profit motive and everything depends on the available capital and the available capital is put to use in order to produce more than anything else a profit and the profit is sort of the distinguishing characteristic of that way of manufacture. None of that is the case in new work enterprises. A, a little story that I like to tell is that I once had a meeting with the people who were working on the electric motorcycle in Austria, and I asked them, as we were having a kind of picnic, why do you want to stay small? And the answer was, because we have to be a small organization so that when we come together, we can all sit in a circle and eat together. Eating together is what is important to us. And that to uh, many people sort of in a flash conjured up a, an image of a very different culture, of a very different way of living that connects itself with new work and new manufacturing. That is, in a way, we go beyond uh, just having co-ops, although we respect co-ops, work together. We go beyond what traditionally has been done in order to introduce other ways of, of, uh, of, of organizing manufacturing. The issue of who owns it is for us not the most crucial and all-encompassing issue. Yes, plays a great, great role. Yes, is important. Yes, but to us, from the very beginning, the quality of the life, the quality of the work, the quality of the culture in the organizations has always been the distinguishing characteristic of new work enterprises. So that people relate to each other in a totally different way and that can not enough can be said in a few words about how different that is, how people who work in large organizations, very often, even if they are successful, suffer and constantly think about how they could possibly get out of the situation in which they are. While people who work in small groups, in small rooms, in groups where only a few people work together, that know each other and that support each other, it's an, an totally different things. So what so far has been missing in our discussion is in some ways really the most crucial part of new work, namely yes. the new work. How do people work in this new culture? And that is exactly um, the pivot around, around which all things revolve. So the image now is, you know, communities organizing themselves with advanced technologies to employ modern and decentralized energy production, manufacturing techniques, and the purpose of the enterprises that they organize themselves into is not to generate a profit for shareholders who may or may not be elsewhere, um, but instead 
The purpose, the goal of this economic activity is the quality of community life. It is the quality of work, it is the quality of culture, the quality of, of life together, and that those are the um, guiding principles for um, how one organizes the enterprise and what the enterprise is out to achieve. So that is crucial. Now we've got the idea of technology is making it possible for people to live more economically independent lives. If you organize communities around modern decentralized manufacturing techniques, you can generate your own free energy to fuel these small shops. You can use these techniques to create for the community those things that they want. And you can form yourself into an enterprise that um, uh, participates in economic life beyond the community in association with other communities as well but for the purpose now of improving the quality of work and life and not for the purpose of um, uh, sh sharing in profitability through uh, uh, salaries and, and, and dividends but instead um, de deploying the the resources created in a way that fits what that community wants for the kind of life it wants to live. If you can comment on that a little bit, because that's where you, you, you sort of cash in what makes um, new work a, uh, a cultural rise, a, an ascent. Yeah, we use the word ascent. It is a way up uh, from the situation in which we are now, like a ladder or like a staircase. We ascend, we move up, up, up to a higher level of culture, a higher level of life, a higher level of satisfaction. And yes, the question you ask is exactly the right question. And maybe you introducing a word that actually plays a very great role in new work, but that you and I today have not yet mentioned, is the idea of people having work that they really, really want. And that from the beginning was sort of the identifying hallmark of new work to not just have people work at something that they experience like a mild disease, like a cold that you'll get over within two days. And about work you can say, well, it's already Wednesday by the time it comes. I can, I can stand it till Friday. But an entirely different experience of work where work, among other things, can be experienced as a calling which quite deliberately has a religious connotation to it, where work can be experienced as something that you do with more passion and with more intensity than anything else in your life, where the characteristic hallmarks are that if you do work that you really, really want to do, it will not drain you, it will not weaken you, it will not exhaust you, but on the contrary, it will give you energy. Work can give people energy, instead of exhaust people and burn people out. In the same kind of way, work can make it possible for people to feel that they really are alive. Because many people, of course, feel that, yes, well, it's fine, I'm a, but actually I don't live. I'm not living, I'm just sort of treading water. And again, new work insists that the difference between a life where you just tread water and a life where you actually feel, I am now living my life, I have started to live it, is work. If you want to experience your life as something that you are actually living and doing, and if you want to experience your life as something that has significance and meaning, then maybe the only way to achieve that is to do work that you really, really want to do. And that is something that in the organizations that new work builds up becomes the crucial part to help individual people, to help groups of people to move in the direction of doing work that they really want to do. So this is important because we've come full circle back to the individual and the quality of an individual's life. Now we started off with the notion that you know uh, greater economic independence through technology is clear clearly possible and more and more so is small, affordable, decentralized technology is, is around. And then we 
had to go immediately to the level of a community. It's a community that organizes itself around this. And now we've got to the community enterprises where they're engaged in, in activity and, and the purpose of that activity is not you know, profit for shareholders, but instead quality of life back to the individuals who are a part of it. And they're the question, what do you really, really want? What enhances life? What you know, gives you energy? Those are the criteria around which new work enterprises serve. That's their purpose um, in, in generating the resources that enable an, an independent life. And so it might be good to, to speak about this just one more time about the value to the individual. An individual might join a new work community in order to participate in an in, in, in economic life in a different way than the job system. And, and the goal of the participation in, in the community is, for, is to gain the um, enrichment and, and life-enhancing aspects of being a part of a community and not being entirely on your own, but also having that community develop and make possible those things that as an individual you really, really want to do. So the, the, the individual and the community again can you comment on how an individual participating in a new work community um, opens up the possibilities for a calling and for doing work they really, really want to do? Yes, and in fact, that is a very large topic and not just a few sentences, but a great deal can and must be said about this. Right now, just briefly, uh, we take the idea that people want to do work that they really, really want. On the one side, we do take that terribly seriously, but on the other side, we are also very impressed with the fact that most people find that extremely difficult and even, in fact, quite baffling. And I cannot begin to count the number of people who in different ways have said to me, yeah, well, I hear you talking about work that you really, really want, but I have no idea what work I really, really want and how do I find it and how do I get it and, and what do you people really do about this? And for that now, it is very important to say that a key concept in new work is the idea of the poverty of desire, that people actually suffer a great, great deal from not wanting anything very intensely and from not having any very clear idea of what it would be that they want to do very intensely. So part of new work gets back once more to the idea of training. That is, we are in the process now, but will do more in the future to train people, training people from the very beginning, training people from tasting strawberry ice cream and comparing it to chocolate ice cream to find out, okay, now pay attention, concentrate, focus. Which of these do you like better? Why? But making that a sort of beginning of becoming much, much more conscious and much more intelligent and much more aware of what it is that you want and what it is that you desire. And training people, is it, frankly, I could say that may be the most radical new idea of new work, that it makes very good sense, that in fact it is a necessity to train people to reach the point where they can, with passion and with, in, with a great deal of force and a great deal of livelihood with life, where they can say, I have now discovered what I really want. And that is not done in a week and that is not done in one quick seminar, but that may take months of training to help people to reach that point. But that is part of the training that new work wants to give. So we began with the idea of how new work uh, is a different way of organizing economic life that has the potential of eliminating economic poverty. And now, full circle, you're talking about a kind of, you know, um, uh, spiritual po poverty that new work has the, the opportunity to, to address and, and engage people in a different way. Uh, way of organizing, experiencing, and using their work. Um, so it, it's not hard to understand how it's difficult to come up with a 
generalized overview of what new work is, how you have to dive into the examples of technology to show the way in which it in, uh, helps create independence, and how from that you have to talk about communities doing this in an organized way, and how the enterprises that communities can create in doing this can themselves be organized and also employed to uh, enhance life, but that the goal and the purpose ultimately comes back to the quality of life of the individual. Now, as with many um, ideas that have emerged over time that, you know, speak to the problems of the age, speak to the disparity between haves and has-nots, speak to the sheer stupidity of a job system whereby people have to compete for the resources to stay alive, um, and the inability of the job system to reach all, all people, and the debilitating effect of settling for the job that provides the wage, that provides the, the cash needed to, to, to stay alive. Um, when we you know, sort of step back and look at an alternative and can envision how it would create a better path and a different way of organizing things, the main question that people will have on their mind is, how does this happen? How does this get started? How can a community start a community enterprise? How can it begin to build those things that it needs to end up with a, uh, a new work community that can speak to individuals uh, at, at these different levels? How does it get started? How does it go? What makes it possible? Can you address some of those sort of steps of, of practicality? Yes, in fact, I'm delighted to. But if something is missing so far, and that is, uh, we started from, and I even mentioned the word poverty and mentioned also the idea of people that are desert people as opposed to oasis people. Now, it has to be understood, it's part of, that in fact is of course in place, but we just haven't made it explicit, that community production, where people produce in small organizations and small shops virtually everything, including even electric motorcycles, that is a way of alleviating and maybe really finally, finally, after thousands of years, in fact, eliminating poverty. So that you know, the answer to how to make it possible for people to eliminate poverty is to link them with technologies which make it possible for them to make things so that they have a good life that they themselves create, so that they don't just get rid of poverty, they at the same time gain pride, and they at the same time get dignity, and they get at the same time a sense of their own accomplishment. And all of that is part of what the introduction of technologies, the connection to technologies, makes possible. And that too, of course, in a similar way, uh, alleviates and maybe abolishes the problems of sustainability, of excess production, of, uh, of, of ruining nature in order to ever create more jobs. I mean, one of the crucial things about new work is the idea that we want to get to a point well, no, we don't have to constantly speed up the economy and make the economy make still more and still you know, turn over still more quickly and produce still more only so that there will be still more jobs, which again will not be enough jobs. So we go an entirely different path in the direction of not speeding things up and not wasting more resources and not consuming more resources and not ruining nature more. All of that in the opposite direction, through the possibility of small room manufacturing dispersed all over the place, in which people in small shops can manufacture even very advanced technologies and very advanced products. Now, back to your question, how does this get started? Um, one simple answer is we're not talking about something in the future. We'll, the question, well, how could this ever begin, is actually the wrong question. I mean, it has begun and it is already in full movement. It is in full swing. It moves in many different places. In fact, what is at this point so amazing is that, yes, there is Detroit, 
And Detroit is a marvelous example, and I think Detroit is maybe the one place where new work is more obviously needed than perhaps most other places that are close to hand. But this is only our perspective, and it is not the only perspective by any means, that on the contrary, what is striking is, uh, and, and I travel, of course, a great, great deal, that whether one is in Brazil or whether one is in Jamaica or whether one is in the Middle East or whether one is in an African country, in South Africa, in the countries that are called wrongly the developing countries because they're not developing, in the countries in which the majority of people are desert people, in those countries the need for something like new work is so obvious that the question isn't how do we begin, or how does this get started? The question is, where have you been? I mean, we have needed this years ago, and now, you know, it is already in many places in the process of evolving and developing. And coming back to my opening remarks, this is an invitation. This is an invitation to everybody who listens to it. This is an invitation to please listen to this and to try to understand it and to come to the point where through training and through education and through community organizing and through community work, in ever larger groups of countries, people will move in this direction. They are already moving in this direction. It is our job to explain. Our job is a kind of pedagogical job. We need to teach, explain again and again that's all that's needed. If we can explain it and if people begin to understand it, it will be done.